Mountain College Press Box, we catch up on what happened over winter break. We'll discuss perhaps the craziest series of events in Texas football recruiting history. And we'll take a look at Texas basketball and their roller coaster of a season. All of this and more on College Press Box. Tonight's episode of College Press Box with Brooks Cabina. I'm Alex Wilkins, and we kind of like to talk sports. So we've missed you guys after a long break, but we're back, and you know what that means, Brooks. We've got to talk about that Texas Bowl. Do we have to? Yeah. I guess as Texas student television, we're a little obligated. Mm -hmm. Well, in case you missed it or tried to forget it, the Longhorn football team lost to Arkansas 31 to 7. Hey, the stadium was cool. Let's rewind back to Houston for the highlights. Got Bevo, you know, just chilling there, looking like a boss, of course. Arkansas scores a field goal in the first quarter, but not much else. Then in the first drive, Brandon Allen throws a 36-yard pass to Demetrius Wilson. Razorbacks go up early, 10-0. Then after the horns, they're going to give up another touchdown to the Razorbacks in the second quarter. But Ja'Cory Warwick, he's going to get the kickoff right here, runs it back. This is probably the most impressive thing we saw the whole game. Runs it back 30 yards. We get some momentum going for the Longhorns. Then in the second and 11, Texas keeps moving down the field. Tyrone Swoops throws a 13-yard pass to John Harris, put Texas at the nine-yard line. In the next play, first and goal, Swoops fakes the handoff, runs it in the touchdown, nine yards all the way. Oh, and I get hit by Swoops right here. <laughs> and Arkansas still up 17 to seven. Then finally in the second half, things really going downhill for Texas. They gave up two more touchdowns, but then Allen hands off to Jonathan Williams, who runs it in for the touchdown, seals the win for Arkansas. Razorbacks win 31 to seven. Obviously, Texas players not very happy about that. Not exactly how Charlie Strong wanted to end the season, but where does the team go from here? Reporter Diego Contreras has more on where this team left off. The Longhorns played their first bowl game under head coach Charlie Strong in the Advocare Texas Bowl against the Arkansas Razorbacks in Houston. The Longhorns were blown out for the second consecutive game to finish Coach Strong's first season at Texas with a 6-7 and seven record. But at some point, too, we've got to develop and we've got to get the pride back into this program. You know, Texas has got to mean something. Right now, it doesn't mean much. You have to play with passion. you got to play with energy. You have to have an edge to you. We don't have that right now. Texas only had 59 total yards a season low and were unable to control Arkansas's offensive attack in the lopsided 31 to 7 months. This is Texas's second straight bowl loss after being blown out by Oregon the previous season. I mean, they were just able to move the ball effectively all game, and, and uh, you know, we came up with a couple stops, but I mean, we didn't get any turnovers, didn't, just didn't do enough. There's more questions than answers to this Longhorn program. After a month of preparation, they only had seven points to show for it. And come spring training, the quarterback position will be open once again. I mean, I knew that was going to be the situation either way uh, this game went, either way the season went. Uh, they said that they always do that. So, I mean, I'm just going to go in and compete, and I don't have a problem with competing. And uh, just, like I said, go in and compete and try to get the job. And that is not the standard here. It would never be the standard here. And that should never, ever happen here at the University of Texas. That shouldn't happen. And, and we know this, you, you have to play better, you have to coach better, and you have to get your, t your players to go play. And we didn't get that done. Diego Contreras, College Press Box. Well, with us in studio, we have football analyst Reese Miller. How are you doing tonight, Reese? I'm doing outstanding. Great to be back after a, a great break. Reese, you and I walked to the station today. Would you say we traveled over or under 59 yards? You know, it's funny you mention that. I would, I would say maybe five times that, but what's really interesting is I think I could take maybe one giant step here and outrush what Texas did against Arkansas as well. All right, they're all talk. They watch the game from their couches. But in all seriousness, Reese, this was a rough loss for Texas. What did you learn from this team's fallout despite them having over a month to practice? 
It certainly was rough, Alex, after really getting some positive momentum, getting that win over West Virginia, which was really the, you know, the, the big win of Charlie Strong's inaugural season, getting bowl eligible. It was really a positive feel. And then the collapse against TCU and Tyrone Swoops, five turnovers, and then really with a month to prepare for an Arkansas team that did decent in, the, in a tough SEC West conference, of course. But really, I was pretty disappointed and underwhelmed. It's hard not to be. With only 59 yards of total offense, the defense collapsed like it, like it has done throughout the season when the offense can't sustain and can't get anything going. I think what really was the most troubling was the offensive line play. Texas, of course, has been beat up, only carried six offensive linemen in that game, and no running holes, only two rushing yards on the ground. Of course, Tyrone Swoops, 57 yards, a QBR of 13.4, the average quarterback it is usually right around a 50 so really underwhelming performance and I think incredibly troubling uh, Arkansas is honestly the better version of Texas they want they're bigger they're better they're tougher and they certainly were in the Texas Bowl right we can't discredit Arkansas in that game but if you didn't catch that reference earlier we made Texas had 59 offensive total yards in the loss where did Joe Wickline and Sean Watson go from here do you still choose experience over raw talent it's certainly an interesting question. I think a question that's going to continue through the spring and practice and really into fall camp. And of course, that all hinges on possible recruitment quarterback commits that, that we could find out here in the next week on National Signing Day as well, because I'm not convinced Gerard Hurd is the answer, of course, who redshirted this season. I, I think Tyrone Swoop's days have come to an end. Uh, I think that j just listening to Charlie Strong in his postgame press conference, he really sounded upset and bothered by the way Swoops res not only responded to adversity, but, but really handled himself in, the, in those last two games against TCU and Arkansas. So certainly, I, you know, the rumor is, of course, possibly going to a spread offense, trying to integrate a little bit more of what, uh, you know, so maybe a Baylor, maybe a TCU might be a good comparison. But of course, TCU, five and seven, a terrific example two years ago. This year, we're right in the running for that BCS. So of course, teams can turn it around in just one year. Yeah, and after a loss like that, it's hard for Charlie Strong to be optimistic about something like that. But Texas ended their season with a 6-7 and seven final record. What's your grade for Charlie Strong's first season as head coach? You know, I'd like to think of myself as a pretty easy teacher and an easy guy to please, but quite frankly, five losses of 20 points or more, the most in, in a Texas season history. Yeah. Think about this, Mac Brown only lost, only lost seven games one time, and Charlie Strong has done this now. In his, in his first season. Now that's been a little harsh. There were some big time special circumstances in his first season. You did see some positive things from what could be or what had the potential to be a dominating defense. But overall, I think it's tough to say when, when any coach takes over in a place like the University of Texas, I think a losing record and getting really embarrassed in several games this season, I don't think that's acceptable. Overall, I'll give him a C plus, that plus to give him uh, maybe a little bit of a positive feeling, but certainly I don't think it's anything to write home about in the first season. Well, we'll see where they go from now, but that's it for now. So Reese is going to stick around so later we can break down the madness that is Texas recruiting. But coming up next, great expectations for Texas men's and women's basketball turned into mid-season speculation over the weekend here on College Press Box. Welcome back to College Press Box. I promise our show won't be all bad news, but for now, some disappointing losses for Texas Hoops this weekend. The women's eighth-ranked team took on Iowa State on Sunday, looking to continue their 13-game home winning streak. But with powerhouse forward Neca and Impali out for the season with a knee injury, her absence was definitely felt. The Longhorns shot at less than 30% in the second half, but managed to stay ahead with just two minutes left in the game. However, the Longhorn defense was overpowered by fouling, and the Cyclones took the win 58-57. Sophomore center Kelsey Lang led Texas with 12 points and a team-high eight rebounds. This Thursday, the Horns stay at home to take on rival Oklahoma. And don't know if you were part of the running of the Bulls entry the student section had to secure their seats at Frank Irwin Saturday. But when the Texas men's basketball team took on Kansas, there was certainly high expectation for the Horns to push for greatness. And Patterson wanted better game day experience. He brought it in with Hookham from the ceiling. And here's Jonathan Holmes for an opening three to give Texas a 3-0 lead. And Jonathan Holmes taking it again, backs it down, puts it up for two. And that completes an 8-0 run to start the game. Then Taylor out to Lammer and dribbles in 
for three to go 11 2. Now Jonathan Holmes passes out to Isaiah Taylor. Running jumper in. Up 13 8 now. Now Miles Turner with the block. Get out my house as Holland goes out. And really puts in the and one jumper. A terrific play for the big man. Here comes Taylor off the left side. Running hook and in. Good for Taylor. And Holland. Comes down, passes down low to Miles Turner for the backup jumper to up 39-38 now. The leaks to Holmes in 42-38. And it all seems just so well in the second half. Then Ellis to Alexander for the dunk. And the chalk is a rockin'. And Jonathan Holmes running the jumper 51-48. And then Jamari Trailer puts it up for Cliff Hanger Alexander. And Kansas pulls away 75-62. And Javon Felix and Kendall Yancey both combined for 0 for 7 from the field. Not a good day for guard play. Reporter Tierra Newbaum has more on that story. The atmosphere was full of excitement at the Frank Irwin Center this past Saturday. But the game didn't go as planned for the Longhorns. Forward Jonathan Holmes said the team did not fulfill the things they had practiced for this game against Kansas. Mostly just uh, execute on offense and, and defend them and, and limit their second chance points, um, take care of the ball. And we didn't really execute on offense like we wanted to. Guard Isaiah Taylor says the team could have taken better advantage of the size that they have on the court by getting center Cam Ridley the ball. Just not getting Cam, uh, we didn't get Cam the ball um, early on. Um, he only he said he only took four shots here. Uh, we need to get Cam the ball more. Um, we know that he's a pain presence in the inside, and that's something that we got to get better at. Though Isaiah Taylor had 23 points, Texas could not respond in the second half. Coach Rick Barnes said the team needs better guard play to compete with top teams such as Kansas. We should be creating more offense with our defense than we are. We should be the ones getting out in the open court, and we're not doing enough because our guards aren't, uh, they're giving up too much out there. They're letting their, uh, uh, again, we, we stood around way too much, and what, what's got to happen with our guards on offense too. They got to play when they don't have the ball. Barnes said this team needs to work on remembering each detail that goes into winning. Because I think it gets back to understanding your role, knowing what we need out of that role every single game and not from one game to the next. And so we can, that's how you create an identity. And right now, I would say that uh, we're not quite sure of that. Tierra Newbaum, College Press Box. With us tonight is basketball analyst Jake Lapin. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, Jake, Texas was down a basket at halftime before Kansas began to pull away. What contributed to Kansas pulling off like they did? Well, you know, it was a hard-fought game from both sides, but at the end of the day, it came down to execution, and Kansas just out-executed Texas down the stretch. On defense, Texas stuck with that zone, and give Kansas credit, they were patiently able to break it down slowly but surely and find some easy shots inside. Meanwhile, on offense, Texas just could not get anything going outside of Isaiah Taylor and Jonathan Holmes. They couldn't get it inside to Ridley or Turner in the half-court set, and Kansas had zero turnovers in that second half, so Texas couldn't get out on the break, and that's how they came away with a W. Well, we all know how great this conference is, but Texas is now sixth in the Big 12, and the five teams ahead are all in the top 25. With the loss to Kansas, where do you think Texas stands in this conference? Well, Texas is sixth through conference play, but they are the third ranked team on the AP poll in the Big 12. And I think that's pretty accurate. You know, the Big 12 is very deep this year. They have nine out of 10 teams who have been ranked at some point this season. But I think third or fourth is right where Texas is at. You know, you have Kansas who beat them on Saturday. They're clearly a step or two ahead. I'd also give Iowa State under coach Fred Hoiberg the edge over the Longhorns. And there's a bunch of other good teams, Baylor, Oklahoma, West Virginia, but Texas is right in that area. Well, a lot of that stuff going through, so expectations a little bit for the second part of it. And expectations were high for this team as soon as the commitment from Miles Turner was set last year. Now, with the loss to Kansas and the game tonight against Iowa State, is Rick Barnes and this team on the cusp of underachieving? You know, expectations were very high this season after what they accomplished last year, then bringing in, of course, the number two overall recruit, Miles Turner. And I still think it's too early to hit the panic button. You know, they did get off to a great start. Ran into a little adversity. Isaiah Taylor went down with that wrist, but now he's coming back, getting back in the groove. You know, a couple of bad losses at home to unranked Stanford, then a blowout to your rival Sooners. 
But Texas is still in there. They just need to go out, pick up a couple big wins on the road in the Big 12 and protect their home floor if they want a good seed come March. Well, the Longhorns are playing at Iowa State tonight. We'll try to keep their name in the Big 12 mix. Thanks for stopping by, Jake. When we, we've got to go to break, but when we come back, all of the updates on Texas recruiting. Brooks, sorry, bust out the Twitter. We need the updates. So we've been told Charlie Strong finally gets to make his mark and bring in some recruits. Reese Miller is back with us. Reese, looking at overall this um, recruiting class, what does the current state of the Longhorns recruiting class look like? Right, well, it's a very interesting class, and you know, it's really an opportunity. Charlie Strong's really first year, you know, last year coming in right around December, didn't really have a whole lot of time to make his impact and get his guys in here. So the first chance we really have to see what Charlie Strong at a program like Texas can do to bring in these big time commits and certainly the big dominoes to fall really over our Christmas break were DeAndre McNeil and Malik Jefferson from Mesquite Poteet High School. Those were the big two guys, a couple of five star recruits, uh, a wide receiver, DeAndre McNeil that Texas desperately needs some playmakers on the outside. Malik Jefferson, the big one to fall mainly because of the perception that Texas gets from him decommitting or staying away from A&M coming to Texas absolutely huge but right now Texas right around 10th in overall recruiting rankings has a chance to move up into the top five by National Signing Day. Yeah Reese and a lot of those dominoes still waiting to fall now just nine days remaining until National Signing Day and the 2014 class comes to a close who are some targets still out there for the taken? Right, well, if you, if you followed uh, Devontae Lampkin, the Texas defensive tackle commit, uh, who is already on campus today, tweeted one down, seven left to go after John Burt recommitted and decommitted from Auburn, recommitted back to Texas today. Uh, right around 1 p.m., he said seven left to go. So you have guys like Holton Hill, Chris Boyd, excellent cornerbacks, two running backs left on the board, Chris Warren, Nick Brosset, but the big hitter still out there, Demarcus Lodge, wide receiver from Cedar Hill. Daylon Mack, one of the players that we've been talking about the last three years, has a chance to come come to Texas after he wrote Texas off just three months ago. But the big one, of course, Kyler Murray, the quarterback from Allen, 43-0 in Texas high school football, three-time state champion, longtime Texas A&M commit, dropped the Twitter bomb a few weeks ago, of course, and uh, looks like Texas might be in play here. So a lot of big-time recruits still left. To, Charlie Strong's able to close out this class with those guys. Well, as you mentioned, Kyler Murray, he dropped that Twitter bomb saying, you know, might be coming to Texas, so with that jersey, how likely is it that he actually comes to Texas and sways away from College Station or the baseball diamond? And what would Murray mean to this class? It's extremely hard to say because, of course, Kevin Murray was the great quarterback for Texas A&M, so he has the legacy there. But I do think Texas really is in play here. Just getting him on campus after he wouldn't even acknowledge Texas' really existence for, for the past year in this recruiting process, it would be huge. Not only because what he brings, but he brings DeMarcus Lodge, most likely Dalen Mack along with him and really pushes this class over the top. And with the decommitment over the weekend, Zach Gentry, the longtime Texas QB commit, decommitting, going to Michigan. Texas needs a quarterback here, not only as a possible answer to start in South Bend, Indiana next year, but for depth as well so this, this is monumental this decision he could make and of course there's still the baseball uh, element in here as well he's looking at a top 30 to 40 pick in the MOE draft so that's still in play of course Augie Garrido was talking to him as well on his unofficial visit here for so a lot of things in play here for Texas but I certainly believe Texas is definitely in the running and it should be interesting come National Signing Day February 4th absolutely Reese coach strong has got to go into National Signing Day with a quarterback locked in. If not, could be looking downhill from there. So. Uh, Reese didn't mention it, but I think he's in love with Sosa. Yeah, I think so. You get it? Are you in love with the Sosa? I don't know. Probably not. But last break here, a few Texas football players played in the Senior Bowl last Saturday. We'll let you know what to look for in the coming week here on College Press Box. Welcome back to the student side. It's College Press Box. Well, the NFL Pro Bowl was played away from Hawaii for the first time in 43 years. I bet Longhorn football graduates Quandre Diggs and Jordan Hicks didn't want to hear any complaining. They played in the Senior Bowl Saturday in Mobile, Alabama. Figures. 
Well, the two former defensive captains made the most of their chance to impress NFL scouts as Hicks tied for the game's most tackles and Diggs picked off southeastern Louisiana's Brian Bennett for a 41-yard return to the 10-yard line, helping the North defeat the South 34-13. This marks the 13th straight Senior Bowl that Texas Longhorn has played in. Well, hopefully we'll have some more positive outcomes for next week's show. Um, but here's what you can look forward to this week in Longhorn Sports. Well, on Monday, actually going on right now, men's basketball taking on Iowa State, and that's on ESPN. Then on Thursday, women's basketball will take on Oklahoma. That's at home at 6 p.m. Then Friday through Saturday, men's and women's swimming and diving versus Arizona and SMU on Longhorn Network. Men and women's track and field and cross country teams are at two invitationals this weekend, the UW Invitational and Howie Ryan Invitational. And then coming up on Saturday, the Legends of the Diamond will play the young guys at the baseball alumni game at 1 p.m. Women's tennis takes on Rice. Men's tennis will take on SMU. And then on men's basketball, we'll take on Baylor at Baylor after tonight's Iowa State. Maybe they'll be happy. Maybe they need to recover. And then women's basketball will continue their trek against TCU at noon on Fox Sports Southwest Plus. Well, like I mentioned before, Twitter's the new hot thing for recruits. So before we go, let's take a look at some of the most happening tweets that happened today in Texas recruiting. First, we've got John Burt, the receiver who recommitted back to Texas. He tweeted, officially committing to the University of Texas for good. See you on the 40. And, of course, a good old Bevo emoji. Then we've got Devontae Lampkin. He tweeted, one down, seven more to go. Hashtag hook em. And finally, Malik Jefferson tweeted, everybody's coming home soon. Hashtag back to the top. Hashtag hook em. And, of course, as Charlie Strong says, hashtag let's ride. <laughs> All righty, well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for tuning in to College Press Box. You can follow us on Twitter at College Press Box. You can catch us every Monday night right here at TSV at 9.30. And for some of the best sports debates in the 40 acres, tune in to College Crossfire every Wednesday at 9.30. Follow them on Twitter at College X Fire. From everyone here in the studio, Master Control, Brooks, and myself, have a great night.